Well, hello there, Applebiteys. This is your Applebyte, Raphael Tavares, talking to you from Applebytes. Yes, that's right. We take a bite out of the apple and we let you know how it tastes. Yes, we are doing all bunch of things here at Applebytes. And today we will have Michael Tomeno from our book here, How to Be a Superhero. That's true. Before we get to that, I will ask you to bear with me for a second because my partner's not here. And I will share with you a couple of things going on that I want you to take a look at. Uh, first of all, there's a couple of Kickstarters that we should be looking at. And here we go. Sharing. This is The Dancer. Great story about a dancer assassin. You know, a lot of martial arts, a lot of great stuff. Uh, this story has a lot of great twists and turns. They are doing the colored version of issue two right now. And their Kickstarter is 17 days to go. They've already funded. But you guys should check this book out. It is fantastic. And it has a bunch of um, exclusives and uh, other beautiful things there that you should really take a look at. Uh, there's one cover that I want. Oh, there it goes. This is the one of the covers, one of the alternate covers, and it is just beautiful. This is the one that I'm looking to see if I can actually uh, afford to get. Uh, we'll see what happens. I already have um, both issues, well, all the issues of Dancer. Uh, I have my black and white version. These are the color version. And I'm considering trying to get the color version, especially if I can get this beautiful cover. That's amazing. It's an amazing story. It's, a, it's just... ah. And you guys just have to check it out. It, it, it uh, has a very good hero's journey um, to it. All right. And that is the dancer. Now I will show you as we go. Uh, where's the other Kickstarter? Ah, of course, we had um, our friend Edgar Paston on. And here is his Kickstarter from Mary Kaiju. And I'll let him talk to uh, to you about it himself. Hold on. Hi, friends. This is Ike. You probably know me from Mr. Manny's class. This is my video presentation of Things That I Like by Ike. <laughs> that rhymes. Some of you know I like to build and play in my city. Whoa. Wait here. I... Uh, <laughs> Well, that was fun. Do you think I can still use this video? Of course not, Ike. There were monsters in that video. Uh So there you have it. That was really cute. That's the first time I've seen that. So uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, they are at 348. Their goal is 2,500. We need to get these guys funded because it's an amazing book. And of course, you know, you got big monsters. You got American monsters. It, it, it is just a bunch of things that you really should get into. So do yourself a favor and go check it out. As I'm standing here, there goes my partner, Mr. Nat. How are Good you? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, this talking. isn't... This, hmm? this, today's not Wednesday. What's going on? Why am I here again? You're just taking some bites out of the apple. Come on. We all need some apple bites. Ah, oh, we're right here at Apple Bites. All righty. I was just talking about Mary Kaiju, and we just saw this beautiful little video that um he actually put up that I didn't even know he had. But it looks pretty good. And I was telling them they should really fund this book because it is uh, a blast. It was a blast, and so were the people who we had on our podcast. They were great. Especially when um, we had them on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Had a whole ball. I think we went over time. Of course, man. You know, you got you got um, monsters. You got uh, comics. You got American kaijus, American monsters. Psh. It was it was just so way too much to cover. <laughs> You're into that. Well, of course, I you know I'm a big Godzilla fan, so it all fits into me. No, no, the American monsters you're into. Of course, the mythologies, yeah, that's that's a definite. 
Let's see. I think the only thing left to show off is the Indiegogo for Tragedy. Tragedy. What is tragedy? It is a fantastic little piece of this woman who's trying to find her place in the world where um, she's stuck in the criminal underground and trying to get out of it and trying to just be her own person. And it's, and it's a great journey. It's a beautiful story. I've, I'm on issue eight myself. You guys are on issue two. And I'm telling you, you guys need to get these books because first, the art are fantastic. They have incredible covers. And it just has such a great story. And the more it progresses forward, uh, the more he really um, covers everything, every character. Uh, the whole story just is a nice flow. Sounds great. Um, I have a feeling they have a ton of covers as well. Uh, any that we might know? Well, here's the good thing. If you can't afford all the covers, you got the cover art book. You know, And uh, I, I really love the fact that he gave this to us because you know i want all these covers and it probably would have wiped me out to get all the covers so the art book uh, is working sounds amazing uh who do we have for artists let's see here we got of course you know i'm bad with names so <laughs> they're they're all on the side there my friend oh yeah i'm not even looking at that i was going over here to the big one okay. you know you got ricardo silva who's actually doing the main stuff on the book this is his main cover. You know, his art is on the inside, which you saw a little bit of on, on top, and it's just amazing. You know, that's his uh, second issue cover there. And, of course, you got a whole thing where you can get both covers. And you have uh, Tyler Kirkham, Steph Wilson. You know, everybody likes the Steph Wilson cover. That we uh, do. Idan, two different versions of that cover, which is beautiful. Uh, Brad Voth. Ryan Kincaid. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have Son of Saint. And there's no fun without a Son of Saint. But, but that, but that's Angel Manuel Lopez. Now take it out. Take it out. Go ahead, take it out. Throw it in the garbage. Sorry about that. <laughs> Parenting. <laughs> You, you need to fix those filters then, my friend. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, of course, Son of Saint, you know, he did a great job with these covers. And as you can tell, you have a lot of beautiful covers. Kenny Calderon, mm -hmm. Mike Mez Phillips, right. Len Danovich, Peter Clinton. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you got a nice little Batman homage. Made by Nick Justus. Exactly. Alec Garza. Alex Sarabia. Hopefully I'm saying these names right. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you got the mix and match where you can get a bunch of ones, for, uh, covers from one and covers from two. And it, it is, Tragedy is just like an amazing piece of art. The writing, the, co the covers, and the art inside is all just beautiful stuff. Sounds great. And of course, uh, I'm still working on our Let's Write a Story Together, which we've been um, putting beautifully together. And at the same time, I was working on something else with Madeline Janelle. And uh, that I remember. Finally put the parallel up. And I did the story part for it. Let's see, where is it? Uh... There we go. Share. And I'll let it talk for itself. A mighty crack of doom shakes the whole area as energy fires dancing and prancing. There where it crackles, there where it booms, Ritten Rit Ralph is sent flying straight to his doom. He musters a moment just to say, what wizardry is this? As the portal forms and through it steps forth, an ominous figure with a mischievous grin. He says, well, hello there, Raphael. Isn't it a pleasure for you to meet me? Written it, Ralph is stunned and can't speak. So the other says, I am everything you've been accused of and all the deliciously naughty things they say you have done. 
a smile is just wicked, and the glee is equivocally insane. As he grabs Ritten Rit Ralph and says, where you chose to be good, I choose vengeance to make the world pay for what it has done me. He tosses Ritten Rit Ralph with ease through the portal. The energy throbs and the energy crackles as books and art are destroyed through the set. You see, my world knows the danger I pose, yet here I am nothing but an image of you. For I am all they say, and will cause their decay. <laughs> the laugh from the other is maniacally evil, and Rinrit Ralph gets up on his feet to rush through the veil and cause his defeat. Yet it's too late, gone in a moment, as now each other stand in their stead. A mighty crack of doom shakes the whole area. Interesting you story. <laughs> Interesting story. Yeah, I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and she was like, oh, I'm going to put the art up. So uh, I love what she did. I love the fact that I have way more hair in there. <laughs> <laughs> You're not bald yet. <laughs> no, not yet, but um, it, it's close enough. <laughs> How's it going with the Pokemon Go? Go. <laughs> go. Oh, sorry, go with the Pokemon Man, Arceus. 15 again? Arceus. Oh, it was good. Finished it. Wow, you finished it. You sound more relaxed. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Not need to wait for those stupid time distortions to show up. <laughs> oh my god. I've been re hearing and reading so many things about the um the the game that I, I actually can't wait to dive into it myself. It's a good game, uh, especially if you like the lore. Oh, yeah. I, I saw that they changed a lot. It doesn't feel like your normal um, Pokemon game. It's not your traditional Pokemon game, no. Um, like I said last time, it's sort of that strange mix of sort of Legend of Zelda in one way, but Subnautica in another in terms of the environment interacting with you. Right. Uh there's a lot of stealth elements if you want to play in that form, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of ways if you just want to go guns blazing, taking down everything that stands in your way, you can do that too. Uh, you're not going to be having one singular team. I will tell you that right now. Uh, you will be forced to change your team just by the types of encounters that pop up along the way. There are some teams that are more preferred, but it's not going to be your one true solution interesting it does sound really interesting i can't wait to, to dive into it myself and see what a, which way it's going and it's funny that we're talking about video games because our pal over here mr michael tomato and besides doing this beautiful book you know how to be a superhero uh he's also done video games that was a, a wonderful segue and uh yeah i have done a game or two yeah, I remember from the last time we were talking about things, and you're like, oh, this is where I started. And this is what I'm doing now. I'm like, wait a minute, how'd you go from here to here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I, would anyone ever ask me to, you know, basically sum up my life story? I like, where do I, where do I go? Where do I start? But um, yeah, um, I made some games. <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind of games did you make? Well, since we're on the subject anyway. So um, the first one was a modification of the game Doom 3. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to have some cooperative support and um, like be able to play with your friends. And um, there was a, a gameplay aspect of Doom, the, the original Dooms that I really wanted to bring back. And because uh, I don't know if any of you guys have played Doom 3, but it was all about suspense. Yeah. And, you know, Doom is supposed to be about, you know, massive action you know just like running and gunning and trying to like fight for your life like every every inch of the way um right. so the mod was all about um you know loading you to the max with weapons and then throwing as much as possible at, at you and uh, and then allowing your friends to join in too if they if they want 
And um, so that's what we did. And um, it ended up doing really well. Um, I got to uh, give a, a, a speech at a, um, in San Jose, California, in front of uh, Lord British and the World of Warcraft team and Shadow of Colossus team and David Jaffe of God of War and all that. And um, it was really cool. I was, <laughs> I was, you know, just just doing a little something in my apartment. I never thought that I would lead to something, something like that. Um, so it was pretty neat. Um, I realized though that uh, um, that it wasn't rewarding enough for me. All the right. accolades and, and all that stuff, like uh, um, it felt kind of felt kind of hollow. So um, I that's when I started working with kids, and um, I realized that kids didn't really have any software for them to create and make worlds. Like you know, they had like Windows Paint and. You know, this was this was a, 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 a while ago um, I think probably even before blender was was much of a thing um, so there wasn't really much much creative tools and so I started working on software for them that made it easy to create worlds and games and stories and be able to do it in real time um, you know in inside the game basically like be able to mold it um, almost like clay and like dropping trees dropping animals dropping monsters um, all that great stuff. And so that did pretty well too. And so that one is, is called the Planet Mark Sandbox or Sandbox Game Maker. Um, so yeah. And then there was one that I never, well, I kind of released it. I did release it online. I didn't make a big deal of it, but um, it was a modification of, a, um, there's a Minecraft clone called Mind Test. Right. And um, um, it's it actually, it's really cool because it's really easy to, to modify. Like Minecraft is actually kind of a little bit difficult to make modifications to. And this one's actually really easy to, to modify and I actually had some kids putting in their own blocks. And um, I'm from Gainesville, Florida, which is, you know, the University of Florida with Florida Gators. And so I, a kid actually painted, this is a second grader, he actually painted the Gator symbol and we put it on a block and put it in game. So he was building with his, his little Minecraft or, you know, his little Gator mine, Minecraft block. So. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's the that's the game. The game spiel. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you know, uh, again, it's, it's, it always surprises me, like, where people start and where they go to and, you know, uh, how um, it's a small world, especially in, in all the stuff we do here. You know, it's 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 kind of crazy. And um, yeah, I'm actually realizing how small of a world it is because I was complaining, but I was discussing with some some other people about something that's happening with with one of the games that is, is not going you know it's not it's not how i wanted and uh, it's not it's not how i like things to go and um um someone was like giving me help and support whatever and um i was like yeah here's the trailer to it and they're, he's like wait that's you like you're the you're you're the head of 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 a sandbox and he's like yeah he's like i played that when i was a kid it made me realize that that i could design video games and so it was just like a random, it was like just a random uh, game Discord, and um, the guy actually has played the software, and like I had like a positive experience for him, which is like really cool. Like it was totally unrelated to anything that I do, um, so it was pretty neat. That's too funny. <laughs> and again, it showcases what we're saying. You know, it's, it's it's a small world. You know, especially when it comes to writing, because you know everybody doesn't realize you have writing in video games, you have writing. In, in comics you have writing you know, that just comes across all the boards absolutely that's actually one of the points in my my book that I, I hopefully made strong enough is that you know writing is really the base of of everything um you know i mean it's just like you mentioned like for video games for making movies um tv shows um animated series is and i mean really anything like well, I should say most things creative, you know, starts with writing. That's true. So this is what we're going to do. You're going to talk about your book and tell us where it came from, what's going on, all the goody goody stuff. Uh, I'm going to go on off for a second. I'll be right back. But you, you got the floor. So go ahead. Tell everybody what your book's about <laughs> and all the good stuff. <laughs> wow. OK. No, no you got pressure. Here, so don't worry about it. <laughs> awesome. Right so here in case anything goes wrong. Well, so do you want to, I, I would love to get to know you as well, um, Scar Black, a.k.a. Nathan. <laughs> also, you're back to that instead of Natasha? <laughs> well, I'm back on my PC. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, too, why Scar has two R's. Is that just, like, extra? 
Uh, it's pretty- an old handle that I've been using since I was uh, 12. Well, that, that works. Yeah. Uh, can't remember at the time. I think it's that I completely forgot how to spell uh, Ralph, you put you. <laughs> uh, yes. What I was doing, but uh, my button slipped here. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. That would have been kind of funny if if you if you had gone away and zoomed in on your. <laughs> and We're just just walking in the background. <laughs> just right. just me talking, and it's like a just a chair. Yeah. Oh, well, we would have been rating his setup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that actually would have been kind of cool. We could we could see all the different books that are in the background. Mm-hmm. We can see all those tiny little figures there. The the lanyards. He's still got that Hugbert figure there in the middle. That's a. Then we got that tapestry from Christian Angel. I can't that tell looks, whose artwork is in the back. That looks really cool. That that huge. I the think tapestry. Yeah. Yeah, that's from uh, that's from an artist whose name is Christian Angel. His work is always amazing. It looks just like that. I kind of like. I kind of want That's to see the, the. I think it's beautiful. Can you can you give us like the zoomed up shot, since we Hold know since we know that it works. <laughs> oh wow, Whoa. that is that is beautiful. I love that. And, and it, it feels it, amazing too. You you zoomed in almost perfectly too on my book. Like that's like that's like that's like almost where it, where it's centered, like almost completely. <laughs> it's like the perfect shot. Oh man. Yeah, um, as you can see, I'm I'm a geek, and I have all my little geek trophies back here. So, <laughs> well, I'm 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 so excited that it, that it, it got to make my book got to make a, an addition to your to your bookcase for for or at least at least the the foreseeable future. Um, <laughs> it's been there a couple of times. So, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, because you need another shelf. You're running out. You're running out of space. Yeah, I want to get another shelf and put it next to it, and it would help me out a little bit. And um, I'll probably be able to see my board, uh, use my board better again. I guess we'll see what happens. Cool. Um, so I'm excited to tell you about some of the updates um, to the book. Like super, super excited. Um, I'm thinking that for your audience that might not have heard anything about the book before, I should probably give at least a little bit of an intro. Um, and so um, I've worked with kids for over 10 years in, in, in different capacities. Um, a lot of those years were, were as a, um, as a teacher, um, I really like helping kids, working with kids. Um, I think kids are, they're, they're a lot of fun to, to be around. I, I really enjoy the energy. Um, and so, uh, I realized that, that the education system wasn't the best fit for me anymore. Um, so I came up with the idea of, to write a book of what worked for me teaching and to also use that book as a way to um access schools and you know uh, so to get into schools teach what i want to teach and you know then i can go home and not have to deal with any anything um which is which is great and so right before covid hit um that's what i was doing i was, I was touring uh, locally for my book you know it was amazing um the kids actually gave me a lot of ideas on how to um improve the show too which was which was awesome um it's then covid hit and and sadly you know touring um, stopped. <laughs> and, um, so I've, the, the book wasn't as, wasn't pushed as much for a bit, but now it's, um, I've, I've really realized that, um, that there's really something to the book and that it needs to, um, that it needs to reach farther and wider because it's having a really positive influence on people. Um, and the, the main aspects of the book are number one is realizing that you have real life superpowers. We all have a real life superpower. We all have something that we're good at that that's special in us. Um, and realizing that we have that superpower um, can honestly change people's mindsets from you know going from being kind of like in a negative place to realizing that like wow like there is actually something special with me and. Um, and you know, like I can use it to, to help other people, and, and also like help yourself. Um, and so that, like that experience with the kids alone too, was, was a big deal. But then it's about training your body and your mind, um, dealing with negative emotions, situations, and then going out in the world and being a superhero. 
And um, my number one way of being a superhero is simply just to say hi to people. I think that um, that goes such a long way. I know for me, when people say hi to me, um, it makes me so happy. Although most people don't actually get a chance to say hi to me before I say hi to them. But uh, um, when they do, I'm like, I'm, it always blows me away. Um, yeah, like it's, it's, it's really nice. And um, so things that I'm really excited to tell you about is that I've actually gotten the book in the children's hospital now. And so now the, um, the kids that are in, in the hospital are, are able to access the book and realize hopefully that, you know, even though that they might be struggling through something and, you know, things might not be so great health wise that, that they do actually have something special about them. And, you know, they can be a, a superhero, like you know, even from their hospital bed, you know? Um, so, um, and so there's that. And also uh, there's a local organization called um, Guardian Ad Litem. And actually they're, they're a lot more than local, but there's a current, there's a, there's a local chapter here that uh, um, they, they had bought 30, 30 books before, and now they've bought 200 books and they're using it to connect with the kids. And these are kids that have been, um, generally, I think, I think that they've all been pretty much removed from their homes and right. they don't have any adults in their life that can represent them in court. Um, and so um, Guardian Letham like finds them a volunteer that can actually represent them in, in court. So these are kids that are, you know, unfortunately have gone through, um, you know, the worst situations possible. And so um, I'm very glad to be able to um, help them in, in some way. And um, they've asked me to do a uh, present for them again, which you know, I've told them like, you know, many times that like anything you want, like just, just tell me and, and I'm there. Like I, you know, I, I would do whatever I can, can to, to help these kids out. Um, so yeah, so that's, 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 that's a bunch of the exciting updates. Um, I'm going to be presenting for, um, for another group of kids um, pretty soon too. They're, they're, they're related to a college near me and um so it seems like things are, are picking up again. So that's pretty neat. It, it's, it's it's funny because I know, I know what you're talking about. I've seen on your feed where you're going, um, this school is buying this many books and this school is buying that many books. And I know that must be have you really excited. It has me so excited, <laughs> like beyond <laughs> beyond words, like just the fact that people are, are, are finding it useful and valuable. Um, you know, it, to me, it, like I just hope that it can that it can make a difference in, in a kid's life and especially in a kid's life that I, I normally wouldn't have been able to reach if I had just stayed in the education system. That's so, right. You know, again, like I really love the book. I, I like the fact that, you know, it has such a Mr. Rogers feel to it. You know, you're you're not talking down to the kids, you're actually talking to the kids. Um, and it, it's funny because I, I say talking to the kids, but you can be talking to anybody. And I think that's what makes the good, the book so good is that, you know, you're you're not just talking to kids or you're talking to the kids in a way where you're talking to everybody. Absolutely. And that was actually one of the goals of of the book was because um, I mean, I like helping everyone, um, you know, whether it be a kid or adult. But a lot of times, like it's, it's a lot more difficult to reach adults. And so I realized that if I'm going to reach adults, that one of the best ways to do it would be through their kids. That's totally true. And, and you know, and again, it, it's it's just amazing. You know, writing is a powerful way to enhance your mind. I recommend writing about your adventures as a superhero. You can also write stories, poetry, journal entries about your day and so much more. You could even write your own video game, movie, script or book, which goes right back around to what we were saying before. You know, this encompasses everything. Rob, really were you does. reading that or were you just saying that from memory? Because that sounds like things you say every day. Does, <laughs> exactly right. It does sound like stuff I say every day, which is another reason I like this book because, you know, especially when I'm talking about writing, you know, this is the big thing, you know, as a writer, just write. Just write about, you know, getting your blood flowing when it comes to writing is, is the whole thing. You know, you want to just write. And we're you have the, such a perfect message there. We're on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. You know, and, and I, I really do like how um, it, you see, you saw that it was just boom, picked up, read it. Everybody got a message. <laughs> well, I definitely try to keep things simple too, and it's 
and it's not that it's like you know simplistic or like just like you said like not no, talking yeah. general, like just like like reducing it to to, to base form um because I don't know about you, but like, even for me with like self-help books and stuff, um, you know, I, I don't want to read 300 pages when I can read, you know, like one page, you know, like, let's like, give me, give me the cliff notes. Like, give me the condensed version. Like, give me like what's actually going to be useful. And so that's what I try to do for, for the book. Um, because I, like, I wrote the book for myself too. The, the book for me is, is a way for me to, to recenter myself. Like if I'm, um, if, if, if I'm feeling a little bit too off kilter and, you know, I need to come back to the middle, um, you know, I, I just take a look at the book and, um, I, I try to encompass as many different situations that I might encounter, um, into, into the book. And, um, actually I, as I was writing it, if I, if I write into something and it wasn't in the book, it got added as a page. I can so tell me, uh, oh. go ahead. Uh, what is one thing that is generally very complicated that you have condensed down that you feel sort of is the most simplest form that people tend to overcomplicate? Interesting. Oh, that's a really good question. It is. Yeah. Um, things that, that people generally overcomplicate that, that I simplified. Um, I mean, I would say, honestly, the majority of the book, but I'm going to give you a better answer than that. Um, I don't know. I, I keep coming back to the whole idea that we all have superpowers because um, I think that um, like a lot of times those ideas get overcomplicated of, you know, uh, um, you know, like you need to be special in this way or, you know, like this and that or um uh, what's the best way to word it? Um, you know, like the things get like overcomplicated with, oh, like, you know, maybe I'm not good enough at this. Like, um, and, you know, like we go down all these different holes. Like I'm even just thinking about some of the um, like different psychological tests and, and uh, um, you know, things like, I mean, even like Myers-Briggs and, and all that stuff, like, like it can get, it can get so complicated when really it can just be, super simple um and even like the idea of uh, i think being a superhero in in general like my my definition of of a superhero is that a hero helps people and a superhero helps a lot of people like it doesn't mm. need to be um complicated where it's like you know i have all these powers and and you know like if i if if, if i go out and do yeah i would say that that's the thing that i simplified the most is is even just the concept of being a superhero and the fact that you can be a superhero by just saying hi like like i don't need to like go like donate like a million dollars to a charity or you know like like save orphans from a from a burning orphanage or you know what i mean like it doesn't need to be some yeah. kind of like abstract thing or or anything difficult like simply putting a smile on someone's face because because you just because you gave them a wave hi could have you know butterfly effects that like we don't even know um there's actually been some several people honestly that i've heard of that um like they were going to commit suicide but someone said hi to them and it actually like like jogged them or, like jolted them and and they didn't end up thankfully going going through with it yeah interesting that's definitely, and it's funny you say that because um, one of the things you, one of the, the chapters you have here, one of the parts you have here, no one is good at everything. Don't worry if you you aren't good at something. Everyone has things they are aren't good at. For example, I'm bad at drawing and a bit clumsy. It's okay. <laughs> you have things you're really good at to focus on them. You know, and, and and it's almost what you word for word what you just said. You know, these are all, all the bits and pieces, and it's and you you did cover the smile thing too, but you know. It, it's it, they're simple things, but it, you know, uh, it's like Nat was saying. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that we tend to overcomplicate. I I love that question so much, um, Nathan. Like I I'm going to be thinking about that too for for quite a bit longer. No problem. Do you have a uh, Do you have any any more uh, profound <laughs> questions that, that you want to spend from left field? Uh, I could probably think of one or two. <laughs> I mean. It's interesting that you sort of see it that way, because as you were talking, I 
went back to like sort of the earlier days of comics when like one of the most common things you would see a superhero do was like rescue a kitten from a tree. Yeah. <laughs> but like now we don't really get that sort of neighborhood uh, feel for that. Hmm. Yeah, you're actually right. You know, and I find that like all those simple stories have gotten completely lost when it comes to comic books, especially the comic books in nowadays. You mm -hmm. know, um, they they've lost that whole building of a hero. These are the things that make the hero. These are these are these are the things the hero does that make them the hero. You know, now it's like we just dive into the, whoever this hero is, and you know, I feel like sometimes you lose the character. Yeah, that's such a good point because before. Like it used to be like the the by far the most extreme thing that that a hero could do was extreme uh, save the earth, you know save the world. But now like that's not even enough. And now like we got to save the universe. But now that's not even enough. Now we got to save the multiverse. Exactly. So, you know what I mean? it just like keeps going. And it's so funny because you know you figure like you you want to like um at least give the hero some kind of bone, some kind of background, some kind of something you know what why is the hero who they are you know and we we I, the more stories i see are, are, are stories where the, you start off in some huge space war or something and you're like okay you know it's, it's a pretty good story but what the heck <laughs> <laughs> i see son of saint is in the room hey we just showed off your cover for tragedy you know son of son of saint is a great artist and, and he is uh, one of those guys can actually make you be the hero you want to be. Awesome. I, 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 I very much um, admire um, artist work. I, I, mean, I think I mentioned there how, how I'm not very good at drawing. And so when someone else can really create something, um, it, it's just like, it's just really impressive to me. Anything that, that I can't do that well, that somebody else can do really, really well, I'm just like, oh my goodness. Because, like, I know the struggle for myself. And so when someone else just, like, crushes it, it's like, wow, that's I super props. I would say the same thing. You know, I, I got some beautiful stick figures I can show you. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with stick figures because they work for your book. <laughs> These are cute. I think, uh, yeah, I, I actually... Um, you know, it, it took me a while to figure out like how I wanted to go for the art direction. And uh, then I, I figured simple, the better, um, because that way, you know, the kids can, can draw along too. And uh, like one of the things that is the most adorable to me is I actually have a lot of uh, pictures that parents have sent me where the kids have, have actually added onto the stick figures and like, and help make them their own. And um, I love that. I think that's so cool. I think it may, it's great that you know you, you got this like this the way it is. You're gonna go you're gonna go in with a whole like you know big cover superhero, but this actually kind of is the simplistic version of what you're talking about in the book. Yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> wow! You you nailed that one. That was your left field <laughs> shot. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that was like that was all the way to home plate right there. That <laughs> You know, and that's what I like about this is, is that you can actually sit there, read the whole thing in one shot and, you know, and then, then you'll come back to it and read it again and you'll find something that you didn't pay attention to the first time, you know, or something that you're dealing with at the moment will call out to you because you're dealing with it at the moment. Because, you know, it, it it's stuff in here that, you know, sometimes you need to hear or sometimes you need to think about. Things I need to hear and think about all the time and, uh, um, I also, I really want to make it clear too that that the book wasn't created in a vacuum. Like, the, like this book was not me. Like, oh, I know everything. Like, I'm gonna tell everyone how how they can solve their life or whatever. You know, like there were so many people that I ran it by, and and uh, um, and honestly, like the kids, they taught me so much, and it's really just a distillation of of everything that they've taught me. And you know, like I like I just put down the words. <laughs> you know, like they they really are the ones who taught me. Um, and I had so many friends and so many people that uh, um, that contributed to the book. Um, so that's what excites me about it most is that it's like that it's a group and a, com a community effort. And, you know, even from you guys, you guys have said so many things that I've gotten my my brain going, you know, and that's what helps create an even better product. Because I mean, there's still so many books that, that I can write. 
Um, so your ideas are, are so welcome and appreciated. And, you know, here we love that kind of stuff, you know, because right now we're working on this write a story together. And that was um, the audience throwing stuff at us, you know, to put it all together. And now I'm at that point cat where I'm, <laughs> the cat girls. Uh, now we're at the point where um, I'm taking all the bits and pieces and trying to sew it together as um, they've given me all the the thread and all the little things that need to be put together. I, cool. I love that so much. And it, it really inspires me to get writing again because um, I mentioned this to you before. Um, but one of the things that I had the most fun doing was actually streaming a Google document on, on Twitch. And so I'd have like people tell me like what they want their superheroes to be, like maybe some characteristics or even some event ideas. And then, you know, right as everyone's in there, I would I, I would create a story. Um, it was like it was so cool, like the stories that would develop, um, you know, like when, when you don't have time to think about it, like you have to just go with whatever that go comes to your grade. <laughs> completely. I completely understand because that's what's going on back there. <laughs> and that's it was fun. It was actually like you're saying it was fun sitting there um you know even with with the, uh, the group here because um a lot of a lot of good pieces came from the group as well you know it was good throwing things at each other and that's one of the things that i feel like writers um especially because we're, we're suspicious of each other um you have to have a good place where you can actually throw your story at somebody else so that you know you can get feedback completely agree and uh i th i think we've actually um segue into what I think is um, one of the most important parts of the, of, of the book. And that's where um, the last, the last page of the main section is, um, is about how we can come together as a superhero team. And um, I mean, that's, that's even what we're doing tonight. You know, uh, like when you can actually bring all your superpowers together, you know, with Nathan, with, with his, you know, hard hitting questions and, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? It's kind of like it's really cool, like how we can come together with our superpowers and make something that's so much better than you know if if, if we just try to do everything by ourselves. Which well, is funny because it was one of the things that stood out when I was looking at the book um, to say uh, to read a couple things is asking for help can be one of the greatest superpower boosts. No superhero does everything alone. Even Batman had Alfred, Robin, Commissioner Gordon, Batgirl, and more. You know, and it's true. You know, most heroes don't do it by themselves. Even though, even the most most loners of heroes tend to have some kind of uh, something to help them out. Absolutely, and that that for me was was honestly my biggest like video game development hack because like here I was like trying to like figure out all this stuff on my own, but um, other people had already done it before. You know what I mean? Um, so this is like talking about like when I was doing the Half-Life stuff When I did the, the, the Doom 3 stuff, no one had actually done anything that I was trying to do. But uh, when I first started out with, with, with Half-Life, um, and this is, we're going back to Half-Life 1 here. So I just aged myself. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so I realized that like, as long as people knew that I was trying, that I, that I tried something myself, that um that they were super super willing to spend a lot of time to, to help me and i think it actually made them feel good and i realized too that like people actually feel good helping you and so if you don't give them a chance to help you then they can't feel good helping you um which is like a hard lesson that i had to learn recently i like i had to be reminded of um that someone someone said to me because they were trying to help me out with stuff and i was like oh yeah no i'm good i'm fine and he's just like you know if you don't let people help you, like they, they can't help you. I was like, boom. <laughs> like and, it's true. And, and I feel like we forget that because, you know, sometimes we get so stuck in ourselves. Nobody's helping me. Nobody's helping me. Yeah. There's people actually reaching out going, I want to help you. They may not be saying right. that like that, but they're trying to help you. Absolutely. You cat, cat girls in the story, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's a whole pirate ship full of cat girls. <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be a, that, like that pirate ship needs to be named after Nathan. That can just be like Nathan's pirate ship. <laughs> I should call it the Nathan. Like, this is for you. <laughs> that's a uh, um. What what do they call the um? Like the, the fans. That's like the fan service. Like, oh, like yeah. Yes, yeah. Like 
like mail delivered like right to you nathan <laughs> the scarred black <laughs> oh even better the scar block that would be uh, a pretty, this is a scar be a, block <laughs> it would actually be a pretty cool uh ship name i think yeah the scar black sounds actually pretty good what or you could call it that? the scar black aka nathan because then people would be like Wait, it sounds cool at first, but then like, wait, it can't eat it. Like, I don't, I don't understand. So it's like that would really be a cool. funny twist to the name. It, it's yeah. just like graffitied over the original name. Just exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that, what ship is this? The Scar Black. It's the Nathan. You shut up. It's the Scar Black. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be like that. That would make for some some fun backstory too. Of like, you know, who was the one that spray painted it? Why did they spray paint it? Like, what were what, what was the message they were trying to send? It could even be who the hell did he steal the ship from? <laughs> there you go. It could be like yeah. the Millennium Falcon, you know, Lando's ship, and you know, uh, so- Solo has it. So, <laughs> lots of lots of options there. Oh, definitely. That's what one of the things I loved about this is just how many options there are. And right, even right now, the way the story is, is this planet of everything pretty much, and because the planet has these the cat temples with the um the, the void jumps in it. it it can have anything on the planet which just makes the story even more epic yeah literally limitless you know especially when you got a fairy detective <laughs> who has a corgi and a giant axolotl yeah uh, what, what is a, her, Wait, her was group? it an axolotl or was it uh, the the core the, the Pirate detectives' partners are the chameleon and the corgi. There we go. And we have, of course, a sentient space possum. That's how the one I was you, getting confused with. How could you yeah. not have a sentient space possum in your story? I mean, Dude, the like, name alone just, you know, what? what is it? Uh, it's a sentient space possum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, this, this is, story's just been so much fun. <laughs> I, I, I can tell. I think it's really cool too when you when you get a bunch of people together to to brainstorm. Like my favorite part of um of game design was always the the, the team brainstorm part. Like oh, everything else, the best part, yeah. <laughs> everything else is work. Like that, in, but in that stage, like you can just like just go nuts. It's like even with D and D, you know, you're like, oh my god, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna set up this world where this and this and this and this. It's all the fun part, just putting the whole thing together. And then um, the hard part is trying to put it together. <laughs> And then none of the players go through with the story. No, they always go in their own direction. <laughs> like, no, you're supposed to do this. You're no, making, what I want to go what to the library. Here? You played so, it all wrong. I got this character over here with all the great backstory. You know, we want to talk to this guy. I didn't have anything for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> all he has is hi. Exactly. Hi. Why doesn't he say anything else, Ralph? Hi. <laughs> that's what my group has been doing in our current D session every week we keep doing something that should be going on that's that's the usual with D, you know as a D, as a dungeon master you said you pr- you prepare for everything and what you prepare for nothing, nothing happens <laughs> Which is a great, uh, which is one of the reasons why I, I tell people that you know, if you want to be a writer, um, dive into RPGs, um, D and D, and all that stuff because it's it's this um, on the fly type of writing because you have to stay ahead of your um, your players um, uh, so that you, you know you can give them something entertaining uh, and you know sometimes uh, the little which is the thing in books what we do we write stories. And then we forget like a character or we don't flesh something out. And because we didn't flesh that out, the story suffers from it. Uh, D&D forces you to flesh everything. <laughs> I think it's really cool too, how much emergent story can come from it as well. Like story yeah. that you never would have dreamed of forever. You know what I mean? Like, like things take directions that you never would have imagined. Totally. <laughs> and, and as a writer, it's just, it's just fantastic. You know, and that's why I always tell people like, oh, well, D and D started me off on writing, well, helped me develop my writing. Then I played Vampire the Masquerade, which even made it even uh, develop even further because 
when I played Vampire the Masquerade, we were playing an online post game. So they would post, I would post, they would post, I would post. So it's a continuing story all the time that you, you know, you're always constantly reacting to whatever they're doing. And the story molds to the, each player because they're going to say something that you're not going to be expecting. That's really cool. Yep, and, and it, that's, you know, Vampire of the Masquerade uh, <laughs> uh, really, really helped my writing considerably. That's cool. So, I mean, every post you're set, you're excited to see, like, what did they say? Like, what is, like, what, what happened? Yeah, as long as you have people that were actually writing, because sometimes you have somebody go, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, what, the, what am I supposed to answer to that? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not helpful. No. Listen, sometimes <laughs> when you're RPing, all you have is like five minutes to read and then you gotta get going. So all you gotta be like, okay, and then you just you just gotta keep going. You don't got time to keep typing up a paragraph. <laughs> I mean, oh even God. if you just hit keys, at least you'd have something. You're like, oh, it's maybe it's some kind of alien language or like someone, you know what I mean? Like it's a, some ancient manuscript that someone's trying to communicate or something. I am group. You got something. You got yeah, exactly. You got something more than okay. Or or it could have been like you could have responded, okay. Okay. We've been <laughs> doing this for 38 years and now you, you just have okay? okay. How many lives have we sacrificed, Gerald? How many? <laughs> and you only have to say okay. Oh my god. It, it was so weird because I you, you you just finished doing this big soliloquy and uh, the person would react by going okay or dot 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 <laughs> or um they wouldn't add anything to what you just did you know because you you're expecting at least a reaction of their character to what's happening you know right I, yes. <laughs> it's like a it's it reminds me of like a, a like a shakespeare line you know where you get like this really long like monologue and like the response is just like all right I mean, I guess it wouldn't, I guess it would, I guess technically the monologue wouldn't be the right, right word for it because no one would be responding in a monologue, but like a dialogue, you know, where someone's saying something epic and, um, you know, someone's like, all right, like, I just like, imagine seeing that like in the middle of a Shakespeare play. Here's what okay, one of I'm going to continue eating my porridge. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, but that story though, you know, even if, even if the person goes, oh, I'm going to continue eating my porridge now, now, you know, as a writer. As, as or as the the storyteller, I go, ooh, this is kind of a diss. This is kind of like, uh, <laughs> you know, I, whatever you said, I don't really give a shit because I'm eating. My... <laughs> so you know, that gives the writer something to, uh, or the uh, the storyteller something to play with. Because now I'm like, how dare you? Who do you think you? You know, it goes in that whole direction. <laughs> yeah. What if they said something like, continue, or I'm listening. That works you know, too. Because, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both of those work. You're, you're like, okay, you know, that means something. Um, and then it gives the character something to play off of. Um, they can get upset. They can continue. They can. It, something's going to happen, but you're continuing the story. Okay, kind of. I mean, it could also be no. Yeah, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> That's because no is such a violent. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, and especially and how it's you said. Add O's to it; it's even worse. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot that can be do it, do, done with no. Oh, definitely. You know the classic. No. No. <laughs> like the, oh, the, the the falling on the on the knees. No, like arms exactly. to the heavens. Uh huh. See, that says something. Or you just know, no. No. Continue the story, man. Come on. Right. <laughs> no. See? <laughs> that works too. Yeah. So he got the feeling that he was scared, that he didn't want to say anything else. The no, no was so silent. He knew that he had him in his corner where he can now. <laughs> Dude, man. <laughs> Sometimes it's the same thing when you're playing D&D. &D. You know, you, you set up this beautiful setting for a character and the character goes... And you're like, okay, 
what do you then I'm like, what does your character do? Oh, I'm like, what do you think is happening? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. She's telling him no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it is no. Or maybe she's about to be told no. Oh, it, it looks like she's like proposing. Awesome. It's like she's proposing something real big. Like, what if I unleash the monster over here? And and he's just saying, "Oh, she, we got it. You got it. You're not supposed to unleash the monster on." The <laughs> <laughs> you definitely know something's big going on when you see all the different like hand motions of definitely. Like, that sounds like, I don't know if that's something blowing up or what's. Well, she's actually talking about the fact that she's playing a game and she's trying to, like, um, uh, finagle uh, uh, buying some extra pieces to the game. Oh, she's joining the onion market. She's playing, uh, what, what Toka Life? There you go. Oh. I'll show you it. And you have started it. <laughs> I just started, like, three days ago. Yeah, but it's funny. You see, right there, you were able to like take um, what was happening over here and put a whole story behind it. Actually, it was funny. I was laughing. I was uh, listening to you guys because I'm like, oh my god, this is not even what's happening over here. No. <laughs> well, you know, it's something not good when you see the hands like come out like this. It's like trying to convince you to like make something happen. And there you go. Oh, there we wow. We get the up close and personal. Ah. <laughs> Interesting. And that's what she's been playing. Okay. <laughs> so what's the what's what's the sales pitch you're giving us? Like what what do you want us to buy? She wants to buy a, a whole other um package, a pack that'll help her do more things in the game. Oh that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, look there she goes. I already bought in, like two things. I bought like a starter pack and like a house thing. Uh this. Ooh. And look, this is Mega Pack, and it's like literally like the whole game unlocked. This big pack is like half of the game, and the Star Pack was like, like well, I can't show you because it doesn't appear. So <laughs> what I want to know is what are you? Gonna, what I want to know is what are you going to build for us? I don't know. <laughs> I, already, I already made you something. It's a comic. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were You've had enough. You've gotten your fill. You got your comic. Be happy with that. <laughs> she didn't make a comic I, after she read this. So I, I, I met my quota for, for stuff that I get. <laughs> yeah, she she went through this. She was like, oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, she's, re she's doing a character and doing her own comic book. And I'm like, okay. That was that was interesting. <laughs> I mean, that's that's. So it's an influential book. That I mean, to me, that's that's the best possible reward that that I could ever ask for. I mean, like, what when you when you put that in that the Amazon review, man, I was I was blown away. I was, you know, I that just that's what it's all about. You know, like when it comes down to it, that's what it's yeah. all about. It's all about, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, and um, that's why I love this book so much is because it, it really, it's not complicated. <laughs> it, it's it's telling you everything that, you know, in a very simple way, which, which is one of the reasons I loved Mr. Rogers was because he wouldn't talk down to you. He just explained it in a way where we would understand. Yeah. And um, I mean, I, I would I would hope too that, you know, the, the book, like it gets to the point, like there's no like, you know, beating around the bush or meandering around the bush. Um, and I would also, I would love, you know, of course, as you know, to hear any constructive, constructive criticism back from, you know, from you, from your daughter, like any, anything that you think could be added, you know, like there's definitely, you know, more, I'm sure that could be, that could be added. And, uh, um, you know, it's, I think it's so cool when we get to all work together. So, you know, you've, you've talked to other people about your book. What what have they said so far that, you, that 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 can be added? Um, so actually, I was just talking to, <laughs> so it was, it was the lady 
drawing blood from me so that I could get some labs done. And, um, and we were talking about um, the idea of doing a construction book. And she was actually talking about how like her, her daughter really likes um, like books where you like find things like, like where's Waldo and, and, and I spy. And um, I was like, wow, like, you know, I never thought of that before. That'd be so cool. Cause like, I love the where's Waldo's books. Um, um, and I think like adding that to like, uh, um, like a, a kind of like workbook, like a fun at work or like activity book would be awesome. That would be like awesome and interesting. And uh, it would get you to do more and um, get you actually interacting. There you go with the book. Absolutely. Um, and something that I've been thinking about um, is I think it would be good to do stories that are based on that book because that book is, is, is nonfiction and it's, um, you know, kind of like more like, you know, different ideas and how to deal with such situations. But I think it would be great to, to have actual story examples of these concepts, you know, in, in action, like how they could be in action for for, you know, all of us, for me, for, for you, for everybody. For Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but uh, again, you know, um, and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show the first time, and one of the reasons why I wanted to follow up with you is because I, I do feel like this book needs to get into more kid hands. I, I feel like um, it can actually do some good in this world. It's what I'm what I'm realizing more and more, and um, I mean the the Amazon reviews too have just been so stellar. And, you know, when I first got like my first couple of reviews, um, it's like, okay, so this is like mostly like family and friends. Like, of course, they're going to give me five stars. But now that it's it's got 33 and like we've kind of like gone past my limits of, you know, just the family and friends, because I mean, I'll just say it. A lot of family and friends, you know, trying to get them to to get a review on their period is you know not not so easy. You know, um, dude, just the fact that you got family and friends to do that because, dude, there, there's times I'm like, dude, I have a show coming on today, and um, my you'd be like, cricket, cricket, cricket. I'm like, come oh, on, guys. You know, Ralph, they go, okay, <laughs> yeah, exactly, okay. <laughs> Are you coming on? Okay. That's, I mean, that's that's my video game work, mm -hmm. right? It's like there's so with Last Man Standing, which is the Doom Three mod in, in Sandbox. They, I think they're actually into 2 million download territory now. Nice. And nice. Um, I don't think that I have had one family or friend that paid either any attention. Wow. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, guys, like I'm doing this, like all this cool stuff, like check it out. And Maybe that's what you should add to the book is, is the whole concept of sometimes helping means um spreading the word sometimes helping means like Absolutely. uh you know all these things that you know it's funny because everybody acts like you need them to actually be present sometimes i just need you to spread it <laughs> sometimes yeah. i just need you to, to give me a good word um so that's so perfect for something that i want to thank you for um you know on on the air like you have supported like so many of my posts like you know, especially book related um, and even just the fact that you like something and, you know, give me an, a, a nice little comment, like, first of all, like, it makes me feel good. And it makes me, it makes me, it makes me happy that it's resonating with you. Perfect. But also like Facebook's algorithm appreciates that. And then yeah. it also gives me a chance to respond. And then which is hitting the, the algorithm again. And um, I like with the book, um, I think with the video games, I think, you know, a lot of my family and friends, like, they're not really into like video games and like they, you know, I try to explain like what I'm doing. They're like, ah, like I have no clue. You know, they're just like, I don't, I don't get it. But like, you're with doing the books, them TikToks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, show them TikToks. You're doing them dickety talkies. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I, I should have actually presented it in TikTok form. You know, and then they'd be like, oh, I, I get it, or like dance to it, like yeah, video game. And uh, um, yeah, like this is how you, this is how you turn it on. Um, but I think with a book, it's a lot more accessible and like. Yeah then they're like no what a book is. it's like a book and uh so um so many people have been really amazing my family and friends and beyond with you know sharing it um liking it uh supporting me 
Um, so, and actually, you know, with my, with my video game stuff too, like there wasn't Facebook um, at the time. Um, I think it was still like in, in a very, very early iteration. Mm -hmm. um, you had MySpace. <laughs> you had MySpace. Oh, it, I miss MySpace. <laughs> it's so funny you say that because um, just yesterday I went to um, the mod database profile for my, um, 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 for Sandbox, and it was a great site if you guys are, are, are aware of it. If you're looking for mods or, or indie games, they have in, indie games too. Very, very, like they've been super good to us. Um, but so one of the things that I had listed in the summary was the link to my MySpace. And I was like, <laughs> oh man, I was like, you know what? <laughs> I was like, I'm not getting rid of this. Like this is, this is day. This is like, this is like vintage. Oh my God, that's vintage. Yeah, you want, you don't want to get rid of it. Does it Did still it have work? Like or? a theme song when you went in, or what's that? Did it have a theme song when you went into it, or was it just like a normal mic? I did not dare click it. I was like, I don't know <laughs> what, <laughs> like what, like what dimension is is this going to to bring me into? Um, I remember, I remember clicking on it maybe like a few years ago, and it just went to like some like kind of general page. Um, but I, I think a while like back they got rid of all of our um information so all the old myspaces aren't there anymore oh yeah yeah I, I i did see that i mean i wasn't expecting much um and so it's actually kind of funny i'm just going to to, to bring it up really briefly but i found out that it seems that someone is, is trying to use some of you know the assets and um, you know what things that I built with with Sandbox and try to use it for their own gain to to scam some people. So I need to um, uh, be wary of that. Mm -hmm. But so um, if I ever need to prove that my project existed before their project, I'm be like, hey, I still got the link to the MySpace. <laughs> like mine is definitely Dude, over there. That alone should be like, uh -huh. Like bring it to the court. Like here's my picture of my MySpace link. <laughs> Like, like this, like I definitely predated them. Like, there's no question. They're like, oh, they're gonna be like, oh, wow, like you have a MySpace link. Like, there's like the throw this case out of court, you know, like these guys fire these guys, like they're maximum penalty for these guys. <laughs> you have a MySpace, <laughs> you have a MySpace. <laughs> oh my god, I still miss those top 10 um songs you could put on that list. That was the best part of that whole MySpace. You know, it's like, oh, you get my MySpace? You saw my top 10 songs? <laughs> I remember every time, like, I tried to go so to somebody's MySpace, like, my computer would just start smoking because they would, everyone would have, like, the custom backgrounds. So, like, oh, yeah. there was, mm -hmm. like, everything going on and then, like, all the music stuff and none of it was optimized at all. No. And my computer is just like, what on earth are you trying to do? I feel like MySpace was ahead of its time, but they won't do it now, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> like um, some of the other pl places have, have taken bits and pieces of it, and they use it, but, it, but it's not the same feeling. I mean, that's what they tried to do with Tumblr, but, well, Tumblr sort of shot themselves in the foot. Yeah, they messed themselves up. I was using Tumblr for, um, for my writing for a while, because, it, you know, you can actually put um, most of the story you're writing into the Tumblr. And, and you're like, oh, it all fits in there. And when actually, when I first started the Written Rich Show, um, I would send them to the Tumblr so they can read what I was doing with the challenges and the word of the week and all that stuff. Hmm, cool. Yeah, when the show first started, we were doing a word of the week and we were doing word prompts, story prompts. And um, I would give it out in one show, and then come back to it in another show. And um, it would lead to either discussing writing or just reading the piece so they can see how I wrote it so they you know they can get an idea of how um the writing would work. Hmm. That's that was the beginning. Cool. That was the beginning. Yeah. I need I think I need to uh, um look into Tumblr a little bit more for for ideas. I mean There's it's plenty of ideas on it. So it has changed a lot. And that's right. <laughs> it's and not it the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like not in good ways. Not really. Uh, they've lost like a, I think it's now over half of their old user base. Yeah, and a lot that of sounds problematic. Gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just been spiraling down. So, 
There's still it's, some communities there, but it's it's not the same. It's not what it was, yeah. Like every time I go on, I can tell that half the people that were following me and don't aren't following me. So I'm like, okay. A lot of the accounts just get straight up removed now. Yeah. And it's like for really random things. Oh, that's because they started doing all that censorship, you know, because yeah. that's, that's because did everything in. Yeah, because Tumblr really went out there. They started giving they go they went really out there. <laughs> some of the stories on there were like <clears throat> How to how to kill your your community by Tumblr? <laughs> yeah, it's been an interesting case study. Yeah, sounds but like you should it. check it out and see what it is because it, it still has its bones. Well, well what's left of the bones? <laughs> it sounds yeah. like uh, um, just even like the formatting setup. Like if you could recreate that in in a um, like a WordPress type setup. Um, sounds like it would it would be kind of interesting. Like, e like well, it just... was like a more advanced version of a WordPress site. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, because um, I want to get I actually I want to get journaling, and um, mm -hmm. um, it sounds like that there'd be some great ideas from that to from my WordPress setup to like for 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 workflow. Actually, it was so great in Tumblr because it was it was like WordPress, but it was a step up. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, you can do more with it and it, it helped you be more creative. And it, it was a great idea. A, a great idea that they, it sounds like they, they kind of just shot it in the foot. It went from one company to another to the point where like they just didn't oh, care anymore you. and they cared more about like the advertisers and its publicity right. and then shot themselves in the foot with it. Which is how they canceled all the all all the people that were on that were doing all the naughty stuff. Not even those guys are still there. <laughs> it was just funny to me. It's everyone else who got shot. Yeah, I thought I, I, what's funny is they, they they started um getting rid of all the naughty people, and then when you look at it, all the naughty people are still there, and everybody else is gone. <laughs> and it's like the system that they used was taking down everything else but what it was supposed to. Yeah. Because they went into this whole censorship kick. Because they're trying to make money. Well, every, yeah. every time we, get, we, we get a letter from Tumblr. What are you guys talking about? Stop it. Shut up. <laughs> how how not to uh, run a business by Tumblr. Basically. Oh. Well, it's so interesting, though, too. like Because you can take the lessons of what worked for, you know, the first company, Company A. And, mm -hmm. you know, made it prosper and then like take a look at like company b like what like really killed it and you know hopefully use the good stuff for yourself and don't do the bad stuff well technically that's what facebook did now it's just backfiring on them so before they would just um eat up whatever you know and they took ideas from all over the place um instagram was like its biggest um rival and they, and they bought it out hmm <laughs> I didn't know that, that they bought it out. That's yeah. That's cool to know. I mean, I know Facebook owns it, but I didn't realize that that, that they didn't actually create it themselves. No. That they, Instagram with the whole no, they bought a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, if you remember the Oculus, that's no longer called Oculus anymore. It's called, hmm. uh, what is it? Um, the Meta oh. Gear or something like that? Yeah, now well, talking about. Now the whole thing is the Meta. The Meta. The Meta. Yeah, there <laughs> is. Yeah, there's there's some big deal with that now too. That that Facebook's really pushing it, and because I think they even changed their company name. Um, yeah, they changed yeah. their company name to Meta, but in Meta. reality, all Meta is is just Facebook's version of VR chat. <laughs> and there's even chat rooms older than that that could even yeah. be said to be the predecessor. But it's mm -hmm. it's basically VR chat, but Facebook. Oh, that sounds so exciting. Yeah, <laughs> but you know that. Well, you you saw they lost like a ton of money because um, they said that they lost money from making the meta. They lost but, imaginary money. Exactly. It was their evaluation form that posted them lower than what it is. So they they weren't making as much money as they were before because so you know people are leaving the app. So they they said it was them working on the new meta, which is where no, they no, no that's not even what they said. What they said was that because COVID lockdown restrictions are being lifted, less people are utilizing Facebook. You gotta be kidding me. That's what they officially <laughs> stated. 
they they blamed they blamed somebody else too. Oh, they blamed Apple. They blamed Apple because of the privacy. Yeah. Um, the, the the privacy updates. I gotta admit, like um, Apple has really cut everything out. My Apple phone is like, nope, nobody's paying attention to you anymore. <laughs> because yeah, Apple's trying goodness. to do its own thing in a similar sense, but it's. <laughs> uh. I can tell you now, like before, I would get all these like um, it felt like the phone or whatever was listening to me, and I would get like these weird advertisements where I'm like, dude, man, I just said that in private. What the hell? <laughs> now with uh, with the phone, it's like, um, I feel like they're like. We think you might like this. We think you might like that. I'm like, aha, you can't hear me anymore. <laughs> yeah, you, you say things in the into the phone, like, am I gonna see it on the computer? Like, is it there? Exactly. <laughs> I gotta love technology. Like chicken wings. <laughs> is it chicken wings period? All the, all the chicken wing places pop up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen some pretty scary stuff like that too. Um Thankfully, not in a while. I think I was using Chrome at the time. Um, yeah, I think it was like Facebook too. I think it was Facebook that started showing me stuff that like, I think I, I just searched something related and like stuff was like popping up like in like Facebook ads or something. I don't know, something something like that. And I was like, I don't like this. Like I need to do something about this. And I did. Exactly. Yeah, because it all gets really <laughs> creepy. You know, it feels like Big Brother's Watch. <laughs> You know, and once you read 1984, everything gets kind of. <laughs> America is always watching you. Exactly. <laughs> so, let's give um, let's give a wrap up here. Tell everybody what your book is, what's going, cool, all this little nitty gritty stuff, where they can find you. Um, give us a nice little sum up of how to be a hero and yourself. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, like the book is how to be a superhero, um, the top secret official guide. Um, as you can see, it's the yellow cover with, um, with stick figures. Um, I think it's actually coming up number one on Amazon now. Like if you do a search and for, um, for how to be a superhero. Um, also, if you search for how to be a superhero book trailer, um, one of the, tra the trailer for the book comes up and it was done by um, one of my students. And so that's me is, is super exciting. And the student refused to let me pay him any money. Um, so I said, let me pay you. You put a lot of work into this. And he's like, ah, oh, no, it was fine. And um, I'm like, no, but it's not. But it's like, yeah, but it is. And um, <laughs> so I thought it just, it really moves me that he, that he, that he, um, you know, was willing to do that for me. Um that, uh, that alone showcases what your book is doing so it i think it's one of the most rewarding things that could ever be that students of mine that were you know young children um that are now adults um you know have have connected and been able to um interact with me and actually add to <laughs> to stuff that I'm working on and, you know, so I can support them. They can support me. Like the fact that they've, you know, that, that having that interaction, that relationship is still important to them, you know, cause it's like one thing, like when you're a kid, you know what I mean? And then it's like, Oh, well, you know, they grow out of it or, you know, you think that, you know, maybe they'll, they'll grow out of, um, you know, that relationship. But, uh, um, when you're still just as meaningful to them, like when they're an adult, Right. Um, as they were when they were a kid, it's like incredible. Um, but yeah, um, and that's what it's all about, you know, just just connecting with people and you know, just doing the, the little things to help brighten somebody's day. Like it just matters so much, in my opinion. Um, but uh, um, yeah, so the website is a uh, uh, superherohill.com. Um, I have a I have a YouTube channel um, where I interview people about their superpowers and that's superhero hill. Um, trying to think if there's any social any other social that that I'm missing, but um, superherohill.com pretty much has has everything. It has my contact information. Like I said, like I welcome constructive criticism. Um, if you have any questions, um, I also one thing that I really love to do as well is um, sending special messages to kids. You know, especially kids that have. Um, you know, gone through the book um, right. and thanking them for being a superhero. And uh, um, I'm always available for that. And uh, um, yeah, 
I think I think I, I covered everything that you. Yeah, I think yeah. <laughs> I think you got everything. Uh, I know that your Instagram is the same thing, Superhero Hill. Yeah, I don't I don't use Instagram very much. I actually kind of forget that it exists, and <laughs> um, which is kind of funny because I keep hearing people like talking about like how they're addicted to Instagram, and I. And I actually do I have a TikTok. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I have a I have a TikTok. I forget about that, but I do have some videos on there. Um, but um, but yeah. All right. You guys heard it here. Check them out. It's a fantastic book. Buy it for your kids. Buy it for yourself. It it really does um, simplify things and give you a chance to think about things that I feel like we've gotten way overcomplicated on. I agree. Oh. If you don't mind, I'd like to say one more thing before. Go for it. No, no problem. Um, like we were talking about how, um, first of all, how how complicated things can get, and like even in terms of superheroes, like how you know, before, like it used to be, you know, like rescuing the cat from the tree or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you ever seen the show The Expanse. Um, yeah, like it's 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 a pretty good show, and like there's a lot going on all the time right. right and it's like um and it's a really good show like, like i'm not definitely not saying that that's a bad thing but i found that my favorite part of the show was when a bunch of the characters actually just come together and have a meal together it was it's actually true. like yeah <laughs> like i've i've seen every single episode for every single season and like that scene alone was was my favorite part and most memorable. Yeah, because I, I find like it's rare now that anybody does a table scene, or it's a complicated table scene. Always. I mean, it, like, doesn't even necessarily need to be like a sitting at the table, like just like a something simple, like something like humanizing. You know what I mean? It was like the one lady was like was like cooking the meal, and then like somebody else was like helping like set the dishes. You know what I mean? Like they like they actually came together as like human beings versus you know you know, having to like fly out and like punch, you know, punch out Galactus or, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's like just, um, um, you know, it's like, it was a very like humanizing and uh, I, I just thought that was really nice. It is. And it, uh, sometimes those, some, those are some of the best scenes, you know, where you actually get to know the character. Yeah. Like you really feel for him, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's almost like you're, you're sitting at the table with him, which is like kind of cool. It is hard to pull off, you know, because you can get lost in it. But um, it, it's an amazing scene when you can do it. Yeah. If the whole episode was table scene, I probably would have enjoyed it as much. <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, come on, slice of life animes are pretty good. <laughs> they are. They are. And you know, we all got to remember the twelve angry men is all around that one little table. <laughs> in like in cube. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Cube, but the fact that they have an entire movie take place in a cube is just like boggles my mind. <laughs> and uh, and Nathan, I might need to take some of these uh, slice of life uh, recommendations for you because maybe I would maybe I would enjoy a, a full episode of of them eating on a table. I, I should knock it. Like who am I? Who am I? You know, to to knock it might be the best episode of all time. <laughs> I gotta admit, anime does good do those slice of life things pretty well. <laughs> they really do. All right, guys. With that, we are at our twenty-four mark, which means we're kind of running kind of a little bit late. But hey, we've been having fun here. And if you guys want to know more about Michael, um, check him out at his various sites and make sure to buy that book and on, on Amazon because it is on Amazon. And I'm telling you, you will not regret it. With that, I won't do what I do because we got a nice little ending piece over here and i'm just gonna play that as we leave i'm gonna just talk is... over it the entire time that <laughs> what we're gonna do as he keeps pressing the button press the button ralph i'm gonna just keep talking and yeah <laughs> we're just gonna keep going and this <laughs>
Abri, abri, abri. That's all, folks. I'm not sure how you have technical difficulties at the end of the program.